so obviously uh you know we can't ha have this interview without obviously talking about halloween 4 uh mm -hmm. where you play uh, kelly mika um so how was that whole experience for you to to be on such a massive production set well it was a, a blast uh I was 19, um, working with my friend Sasha Jensen, and who played Brady. He and I had known each other from high school. He actually took one of my best friends to prom, and we all went to prom together. So when I got to set, or not to set, but to the hotel, and I saw that he was there, I was like, oh my god, this is going to be even more fun and more relaxed, and and you know just it it leveled the the nerves for me mm -hmm. and then meeting nine-year-old danielle harris and she was so sweet and such a delight and and ellie cornell was so great and so awesome beautiful person i mean we all just really had a a, a fun time the four of us kids but it was really when we were around Donald Pleasance that we all were kind of like yeah. sitting up straight and, and taking notice and realizing like this is a real, this is the real deal because he was the actor, the the real British speaking, you know, theater actor who had a great film career as well. So mm -hmm. he had the Pleasance presence on set and it was it was neat to watch because he knew that he had this this special power and we all treated it with a lot of reverence um I mean I didn't really you know necessarily get to work with him one-on-one -on -one, but I did get to watch him and I remember really embracing the fact that he was so kind to all of us and and welcoming and i asked him a few questions about acting i, I don't even really remember what they were i was just trying to make conversation <laughs> trying to be cool and uh and i just remember how he was he welcomed it he, mm -hmm. he enjoyed that and it was a great set we filmed in salt lake city so we had these beautiful craftsman homes and the uh you know, so the sets were real. We never worked inside a studio, which I thought, you know, it, it gives a level of reality. The, the store was a real store. The house was a real house. The streets are real streets. You're not in a studio lot, um, which I mean, you know, you're an actor, so it really doesn't matter. But I just, I enjoyed the whole, like walking through the house when nobody was in it and the smoke was still sitting there and the you know light was coming in and trees are waving i mean it had it had this spookiness for sure yeah. and our our michael myers was great uh wilbur boyle and you know everybody was just incredibly supportive dwight little our director was brilliant and and kind and never put us in any harm's way um we did have a lot of we did our own stunts basically i would say i think danielle harris did almost all of her stunts except for a couple where she had a, a double so it in reality i mean i thought that the film still holds up with what's out there even today i think it's still super entertaining and and it's it delivers um and that's all due to dwight i think he I think he captured the essence of Halloween right in the main titles and never lets you go. And I think, I think because it was not just a little kid, but because it was a little girl, yes, there was a, another sense of just a, another level, like next level fear that takes place when you're looking at somebody that's so cute and so vulnerable. You know, you don't want her to get hurt. You're not rooting for that kid to get hurt. You're rooting for me to get hurt, which is fine, because <laughs> I'm a bitch. I mean, lessons to every girl who's thinking about stealing somebody else's boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. 
um, you'll get a riot gun through your torso and lodged <laughs> onto the floor. <laughs> and that's not even by Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah, I should have been Ellie behind that shotgun. She should. <laughs> It starts off as Michael Myers, and then they cut to Ellie, just like, "Yeah, take that, yeah. you bitch." <laughs> <laughs> so, what what was that like filming that? Because, as you said, you, so I, I assume you filmed that stunt yourself. Um, yes. What was they that like? Built a, well, it was a contraption that the stunt crew came up with, which was pretty ingenious. They um, drilled a hole into the door. They put a bike seat a, like a 10 speed bike seat mm -hmm. onto that into that hole then they drilled another hole above that where a cable wire that was attached to my harness uh so they could pull me up so i'm sitting on the bike seat so my legs are dangling right because my feet are off the ground so i have a place to sit but then i have this harness with a wire through the shirt that's behind me and they're pulling it behind them so I you know like that right so they did it a few times and the harness was getting tighter and tighter inside underneath me and by the time they took me off which off the bike seat um I'd been up there for maybe about mm, 10 12 minutes not too long but long enough so that all the everything was just like squeezed inside my harness and when they took it off and released the harness everything went whoosh like <laughs> all the guts that that were in you know oh. all my guts just got totally like squeezed and then then it released that was a little uncomfortable but you know completely effective and and who cares about who cares about that when uh when you want a great scene that's going to live forever you know you can withstand about 12 to 15 minutes of discomfort. I mean, I'm sure lots of actors have, I mean, forget that 12, 15 minutes. When I did Bride of Reanimator, I was in six to seven hours of makeup every day before I stepped on set. And then like three hours after a 12 hour work day to get it all off. So I had full 24 hour turnarounds just to recover on my skin from the, you know, the harshness of it. But yeah. Yeah, I've endured some uncomfortable moments on film, but what else would I be doing? <laughs> Being uncomfortable not working. Yeah. I'd rather be uncomfortable working than uncomfortable <laughs> not working. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, I think that's I always remember with Halloween four. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure you hear this quite a lot, but I mean for me, Halloween four to this day is still one of my standout favorite Halloween movies of the franchise. And as, as, as you said, you know, the movie holds up so well, even to this day. Um, and I don't just think that's because obviously part three, there was controversy with not having Michael Myers. So they obviously heads the return of Michael Myers. I don't even think it's just that. I think just for, just for a viewing movie, if I took it as a standalone film, I just had so much enjoyment watching that film. I think in general sense, the cast is so young, um, not just with Daniel, but even with like yourselves at 19. Um, I think all of you just did such an incredible job on that movie. And, and on behalf of a lot of people, I'd like to thank you so much for the work you did mm -hmm. because it's such an amazing movie. Well, thank you, Sam. I, I, I'm very proud of that film and I, I agree with you. I think it was really well cast and I think everybody brought it. I think uh, Danielle and Ellie had such a beautiful connection. Their uh, scenes were just seamless and, and just felt so real. And it, I mean, it, you can watch any of any part of that film. And, and I, I think you're right. It, it's a, it's an interesting piece. It's a, it has a great pacing and, you know, Donald Pleasance in that ambulance, like, come on, like, that was so, so good. It was just, and, and it, you know, in a way it's really not that gory, that no. film. It's not, it's not like the, 
you know, intense like sounds of stabbing chicken breasts that we get all the time now. <laughs> You're just like, oh my God. No. Um, it, it's really, it's suspenseful. Yeah. And when you think about it, like what's the sexiest thing? The sexiest thing is like not seeing all of it at once. It's like the the strip tease, the, the <laughs> you know, the the little glimpses, the the parts that are just like, mm, you know, that get your attention. And I think that Dwight knew how to do that. He knew how to tell a horror film in a very subtle way that makes you terrified. Yeah. And you're it's it's not so obvious. And he's yeah. he's playing on your on your human emotions rather than trying to shock you into freaking into being scared. Do you have any particular uh, fond memories you have from being on set? Um, well, I, like I said, I really enjoyed walking around the house by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that was to really just embrace the, the spooky quality of you know, it, do are these walls talking? And yes, they are, and they're watching every move. Um, it was really the stuff that was offset that was really great. Like we had a really killer indoor swimming pool at the hotel. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is such a fond memory. We every day after work, all we, all us kids were just like, okay, it's you at the pool, you know, and just. <laughs> Because it was cold, we were shooting in the winter because they wanted those yeah. stark trees and they wanted the, you know, that that vibe. And um, so it was really fun at the end of the day to just be kids and go swimming in this really warm indoor pool with a jacuzzi. <laughs> and because nobody, we weren't old enough to drink. That was just like that was our gather, our watering hole, literally. And and it was a way to just kind of let the day go and yeah we're all we're spending a lot of time screaming or or crying or whatever it is being you know mean to each other you know being bitchy to ellie or whatever and then to have like <laughs> hey see you at the pool later i mean that was just that's that's a beauty of being an actor i think mm -hmm. you can you can spend all day long having this intense emotion on somebody else and you're just giving it to them and you're just being you know, mean or hateful. And then at the end of the day, when they call rap, you're like, hey, let's go and hang. <laughs> it's such it's such a sandbox. Mm -hmm. And and that's why we love kids so much because they can play in that sandbox. They might have a fight, but by the time lunch rolls around, they're best buddies again. They, you know, kids let that stuff go. They don't know how to build a resentment yet. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a, like, I think, for me as an actor, like that's what I love about it is that like I can I can explore all these different emotions. I'm working with an actor who's strong enough to take it. And then when they yell cut and that's a wrap, we can go and, you know, have a glass of wine or go and have a meal or, you know, it's like there's no hard feelings. It's nothing yeah. sticks. But you but you're exhausted and you're you're spent because you've just had this emotional day and so yeah I think the swimming pool was really <laughs> it was a godsend that we had that I'm really glad that they I don't know if that was a production decision from the get-go like let's find a, a, a hotel that has a pool for these kids so that at the end of the day they can go and play a little bit but we were all very protective of Danielle and uh, she's one of my great friends to this day. And, That's uh, amazing. Yeah, all of them, really, Sasha and Ellie. And Dwight, too. I just did a, um, well, at, during COVID, I did a uh, an interview with all of them. I did, hosted this little podcast because oh, wow. didn't everybody, like, decide to have a podcast at COVID? Like, yes, what am I, I did. Gonna do? <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly when I started. <laughs> okay, exactly. So good for you. You're still doing it. And now you've got this new career that, you know, you're invested in. And it's great. But I, I did two. I did one with the Halloween forecast and I did one with the Bride of Reanimator cast. Oh, no, with the Hard Bodies cast. I just want to get the Bride of Reanimator cast and then I'll have my, my trifecta podcast. And 
You have and to get that cost. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs>